Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the second to last class, uh, second to last lectures of this course. Um, today, we're going to construct the Adams spectral sequence. For these, I will need the spectral sequence of a filter spectrum. Now, in the exercise session, you did the spectral sequence of a filtered complex, uh, if I recall correctly. Um, unfortunately, I forgot to tell Pavel that I needed the one for a filter spectrum, so I'm going to have to introduce it, and that's also going to be useful because it's going to uh, show up on YouTube, so for future reference. And it is the construction is on the nodes that are on my web page right now. So uh, that's uh, th that's still going to be useful. So OK, the construction is not that hard. So if you've ever seen a filter complex before. So first of all, what is a filter spectrum? So a filter spectrum is just a functor. X bullet from Z to spectra, where this is, uh, well, sorry, it shouldn't use green. This is just a poset of integers with uh, decreasing order. That is, it is a diagram of the form xs plus 2 goes to xs plus 1 goes to s xs goes to xs minus 1 etc note that i'm not asking the maps to be uh, embeddings because there is no notion of embeddings for spectra so we do what we can and in fact the exam general examples we will have like all sorts of possible maps uh, so you just do you know a diagram and if you have a filter spectrum, you define x infinity, the co-limit over s excess, you can think sort of like the union uh, only, I mean, it's not really a union, but, and you can define x minus infinity, the limit. You can find sort of like the intersection but yeah. uh, in the end, in practical situations, one between x infinity and x minus infinity will probably be zero, and you'll be interested in studying the other. So, and we also define the s graded piece is just a cofiber of the map from xs plus one into xs. And sometimes I'll write it. I think I did it before already, xs plus one mod, uh, xs mod xs plus one. And that's the associated gradient. And the idea is use the homotopy of the associated gradient to study the homotopy of x minus infinity or the homotopy of x infinity. That's the intuition. And let me give you a simple example. So let E x be spectra. We have the Posnikov tower that I introduced some time ago. That's a filter spectrum. Remember in which you just, uh, wait, am I doing that? No, sorry, that's not the Pustin of Tower. That's the white hat tower that I, I need to use here. Uh, sorry, the Pustin of Tower is the truncation. This is with using connected covers. So remember T greater or equal than N of X was the universal and connected map from the spectrum. So if you want uh, Sigma N, Connective cover sigma and this one zero. Well, the connective cover was destroying all homotopy groups in degree below zero. This t greater or equal than n just destroys all homotopy groups uh, below n. So let me write it as t greater or equal than x. So you get t greater or equal than infinity of e is zero. 
and t lesser or equal, sorry, greater or equal than minus infinity of e is uh, e. And uh, great, and the associated graded of this guy is sigma s h pi s of e. Okay. Now you can be clever and tensor this by X. Just pointwise. Sorry, I forgot the dot sign. Ish. And so you get uh, T greater or equal than X plus one E tensor X t greater or equal than s e tensor x, etc. And okay, you still have t greater or equal than minus infinity of e tensor x is just e tensor x. So the homotopy is the e homology of x. But now the associated graded, you get uh, the ordinary homology of x with coefficients in, sorry, yes, in, uh, in uh, the homotopy groups. So, so particular, let me write this explicitly. And if you are, well, okay, let me see it later. Uh, this is just H star X by uh, S of e, uh, H star minus s. Sorry, there is a shift. So you can build E homology. You want to study E homology using uh, uh, ordinary homology. Oh, sorry. I was doing the cohomological version. Of course, this is the homology, not the cohomology. And is it a plus or a minus s? Always get it wrong. Minus s. Okay. And also there is a remark if x is bounded below, that is, it has no homotopy groups below a certain degree, you can prove that t uh, greater or equal infinity e tensor x, that is the limit of this tower, is actually zero. That's not always true, but if x is bounded below, you can do a, some kind of connectivity argument so that this filtration is actually exhaustive. Okay, questions about this example? It is not the example we're going to use today, but it's a very concrete example, and I think it's worth mentioning. This is builds what will be called the Atiyah here's the Brook spectral sequence that compute E homology of X using the ordinary homology of X in the homotopy groups of E. Uh, and you can actually do a parameterized version of these building up the SAR spectral sequence that you should have hinted in in the exercise sessions. This is a different construction than the one that Pavel did, but you can do it. I, I actually wrote some more details in the, uh, in the notes, but I think I won't explain how to get the SAR spectral sequence unless you really want to. Questions? No, this seems fair. Okay, so we have this, this, this filter spectrum and we are interested in computing either the homotopy type of X infinity or of X minus infinity. And uh, we want, um, so let me copy the filter spectrum. Actually. We want to, to see what we can say. Uh, so the idea is write the, long exact sequences of the cofiber sequences or the fiber sequences yeah. for spectra they're the same thing Great. so i'm going to write them in a somewhat compact way because we're going to have a lot of indices soon um, that's famously the problem with spectral sequences you tend to accumulate a lot of indices uh, but 
I'm going to write them so we have some kind of exact triangle. So I have a map like this going down to this. And I get a map here that I'm going to make a dash on here to remember that it decreases degree by one. It's a map of graded abelian groups. I'm seeing this as graded abelian groups, and this map decreases the degree by one. And I can put, you have all its little brothers here. And here, let me put another one. All the way at infinity. So we have this diagram with exact triangles. And, uh, and we are interested somehow in the limit, and sorry, in the limit here and the co-limit here of this thing. And we understand, suppose we understand these guys. So this is called an exact couple. Um, uh, so unrolled. Exact couple is a diagram of this form as plus two, as plus one, as, as minus one. And here we have groups that I'm going to call es plus one, es, where the triangles are exact. And in general, these, these objects will be some kind of graded abelian groups. Uh, and the maps will be homogeneous maps of some degree. You can see this is exactly the kind of structure we had here. And as usual, we define A minus infinity be the co-limit of AS and A infinity be the limit of AS. And we will also need another guy, which is R A infinity, which is the lim one A S. If you remember, some time ago I introduced this lim one term um, that measures the failure. And okay, uh, I wanted to give you more proofs, but I think I'll just have to give you a couple of statements and definitions now. So we need the Milner exact sequence first. which tells us that uh, we have an exact sequence like this, uh, shifted up by one, uh, on top of groups of x infinity and a infinity going to zero. And this comes from the long exact sequence in the fiber sequence, x infinity, which is the limb xs going to the product, going to the product with the shift minus one math. This is a trick we did in the past. I'm sorry, I'm not giving you a full proof, but you can probably reconstruct it given some time. The point is that this R A infinity and this A infinity see this homotopy groups of X infinity. In particular, if X infinity is zero, both A infinity and R A infinity have to be zero. Infinity is zero implies a infinity, a infinity is zero. And this condition is an important condition. It has a name. I'm going to call, we say that it's the, the spectral sequence, which I haven't defined yet, but I, I will, is conditionally convergent to x minus infinity. That's of this condition. That's the name. It's just a name. It's just that you, you see it often. And then the other observation is simple. It's because homotopy groups commute with 
filter co-limits. We have this, this is equivalence here. Okay, and actually, let me put some names. I'm going to call these maps I, J, K, etc. So I is the map that shifts A forward. J is the map that goes to the associated graded, and K is the boundary homomorphism from the associated graded and the piece before. The piece before. Okay, sorry, I'm going quite fast to some technical material, so please do interrupt me here. Is it okay? Could you maybe recall the relation between X and A? Yeah, so, okay. A S is just the homotopy groups of X S and E S is the homotopy groups of the associated graded. Thanks. Okay, so E S in a sense is what we understand. A infinity and A minus infinity is in a sense and R A infinity is in a sense what we want to understand. And since I said it before, X minus infinity equals zero means that we are conditionally convergent to x infinity since i said the other guy um, maybe a short other question why can you for for this last equation on the left hand side you said one should apply a filtered co-limit argument but um if i remember correctly a in minus infinity is a limit right no 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 a minus infinity is the co-limit sorry no 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 no, no, no. i mean it, it, there is a, there's going to be a lot of notation today so uh please do interrupt me uh it's a lot more natural than it looks like, but the first time can be quite overwhelming. I know it was for me. So please, please, please do interrupt me. No, the, the tricky part is the limit where we have this additional term here. But <clears throat> it's thankfully it's not that bad. Okay. So idea, the idea here put filtrations. on a infinity and a minus infinity. <clears throat> and the definition is the following. Uh, we have fs of a minus infinity is the image of the map from a s to a minus infinity. So what the thing you can read up to filtration, filtration degree s and FSA infinity is sort of different, but not that much, is the kernel of this. So we have these two filtrations. And the goal is study, or rather compute, FSA infinity, the associated graded of this guy. These are all um, decreasing filtration. If you if you see it. Okay. And we will give a description of these in terms of the ES and plus some additional data. Okay, and here comes the, the barrage of definitions. Uh, so actually, maybe I think this will make more sense if I copy the exact couple so that you can see it here. Okay, we ready? Is the definition of these filtrations Clear? So we define 
CSR. What is it? I call the R cycles. These are elements in ES such that if I take KX, which lands in, uh, in AS, this is in the image of the map from AS plus R to AS plus one. So I can go, if I push it here, sorry, maybe this is a different color. If I push it here, I can go back R minus one steps. And these clearly uh, are all contained, sorry, all contain the kernel of K. Clearly. Uh, because if you if you go to zero, zero in the image of everything. And I can have VSR. These are boundaries. These are elements such that, uh, what's the quickest way to say it? Uh, X is of the form JY for Y in the kernel of the map from AS to AS plus R. Now this is for R greater than 21 and this is contained in the kernel of K. That's because KJ is zero by the exactness. It's the image of J. I mean, this is the image of J. The kernel of K is the image of J. So these are the things that you take an element that you can you can lift it here along J to something that dies after R steps. And so we have this ZS1 contains ZS2 contains ZS3 blah 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 contains the kernel of K, which is the image of J, which contains this BS3, contains BS2, contains BS1. We have this kind of thing. Um, sorry, well, what does the, um, so what, where in the definition of, uh, of this BSK, does the K uh, come into BSK. No, oh, yeah, what's what's this letter? BS R R. R. And where is the R in the ah? It's S plus R. Ah. Yes. Uh, and in uh, C S R, ah, it's S plus R two S plus one. Okay, okay. Yes. And so, I'm I'm a little confused, like lost with all the notations. Yeah. What's <laughs> no? So A is A S is the. Um, it's it's not very important for now, but A S is going to be the homotopy of the filter piece, and E S is the homotopy of the associated graded. Ah, okay, okay. Um, but uh, for for these for 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 these definitions, only the only thing you need is that you have this diagram with uh, exact triangles here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And I'm going to define ESR to be ZSR modulo BSR. And hopefully I haven't screwed up the indices. Uh, yes. This might be an R minus one. I don't know. We'll see in a second when I, I try to write it. Uh, that's actually the one that's worrying me. Hmm. Well, we'll see.
No, okay, this should be S plus R plus one, sorry. Okay, but I have these guys. These are uh, well-defined objects. And why am I calling them cycles and boundaries though? So I, I'm going to claim that there is a map DR from ESR to E S uh, plus R plus one ER such that the kernel of the R is exactly ZSR plus one. Well, the image of that at least. And the image of the R is B s r plus one well s plus r plus one i guess or at least the quotient here that's what i'm claiming so each so these are called pages of the spectral sequence and each page is the homology of uh sorry so e s r plus one is exactly the kernel module, the image is the homology of the previous page for a certain differential. If you've seen spectral sequences before, that's probably what you have seen. So how do I define this dr? dr is, sorry, no, I want this. So dr, I take an x, so remember, X is some class that um, that comes from a ZSR. So I'm going to claim that DS is Z Y uh, J Y, where I to the R Y is K X, or rather, or a lift of K X. So what I do. To compute the differential, I go here, I push it here. This is in the image of something coming a few steps back uh, because, uh, because by definition of cycles. And then I can push it down with J and I end up here. This is of course not well defined, depends on the lift, but it is, if you, if you look at the definitions, it turns out that it is well defined up to boundaries. And the kernel and the image are exactly um, what they are. So uh, exercise, verify this is well defined with the properties I, ha I have. Yes, I claim. Uh, yeah, I don't think we have time to, to slowly work through diagram chasing here to prove these properties. Uh, but it, it is not hard. It's, it's also, it's probably easier to understand if you do it on your own, honestly, uh, than me uh, writing down everything. And so at this point I define E S, so sorry, first Z S infinity is just the intersection of these Z S Rs. These are called permanent cycles because they are the elements in the cycles in every page. There are cycles in every page for all possible differentials. And then I have BS infinity is the union of these guys, which are just the boundaries. Just boundary for some differential, we don't care which one. And finally, we can define the E infinity page here, and that's the important guy. That's the guy which will correspond to the filtered pieces that we wanted to study. So you can see in order to describe this e infinity page, you need the E2 page, the E1 page, some page to start with, and the datum of all the differentials. And once you have that, you can compute this e infinity page. 
and let me put a proposition here. So I need a technical hypothesis, which is actually easy to verify in practice. So suppose limb one in R of Z S R is zero for every S. then there exists a short exact sequence, which you start with the piece of the associated graded of A minus infinity that we want to study. We end up in the infinity page, level S, and then you get the other piece you want to study. And I wrote a complete proof in the notes, but I don't think I'll have time to, to go through it. Uh, just say what the first map is, perhaps. So for example, you have F S A minus infinity. Remember, this is just the image of A S into A minus infinity. I can map this into E S infinity by taking x here, you lift it to some x tilde in a s, and you send it to the class of j uh, x tilde. And this turns out to be well-defined with the right kernel. Because the kernel of this map are exactly those x tilde such that j x tilde is in boundary infinity. And so this is exactly those such that x tilde can be changed so that it lies in a image of i from as plus one to as. And you can Okay, I'm, I'm not giving enough details, but uh, there is the complete proof in the, in, the, in the notes. But the point I want to make is that if, for example, if A infinity is zero, which is the case we're going to be interested in today, um, then these two pieces, this infinity page is exactly the associated graded that we wanted to study. And there is a lot more to be said about spectral sequences, uh, but I think I'll stop now with, with the material. There is some more in the notes, but I think it makes no sense to give to throw even more definitions at you, especially since I will have to throw definitions about the Adam spectral sequence. At least this now you know how to compute the uh, the the, the, the spectral sequence from even a filter spectrum, how is it defined, and how it is related to these filtrations on the, the x infinity and x minus infinity parts. This map, by the way, is a lot trickier, and to define it, you need to use this hypothesis in an essential way. But there is the, the proof written down. Okay, questions before I change topic. And by the way, one often writes something like ES infinity converging to uh, A minus infinity. Sorry, if A infinity or something like that in these circumstances.
So for example, in the, in the case before, you, had, you, have a, you have a spectral sequence like this. One right like this. So these, remember, were the homotopy groups of the associated graded. Oh, sorry, each two or one or some R, some fixed R that you find particularly easy to describe. Converges to this guy. Okay. Questions? Note that in particular, this implies that this guy is a sub quotient of this guy. Or rather, it's not a sub quotient. Okay, fine. It has, a, it has a filtration whose associated gradient is a sub quotient of the left hand side. But the upshot is that if this piece is uh, finitely generated as an abelian group, then so is this piece. So that's already one interesting way you can use spectral sequences to prove stuff because it's typically easy to show that the homology of something is finally generated. And, uh, <clears throat> okay, so now we get to a new box, the Adams spectral sequence. So throughout, we'll fix a prime And the story of the other spectral sequence is actually a lot more um, general. But to, to give the, the full general story, I would talk about I would to talk about co-modules and cooperations and etc. And you'll see already in what we're going to do today that we're going to have some finiteness hypotheses here and there that are essentially just because we are working with cohomology, which is the dual of the homology. And to for the dual to be well behaved, you need some finiteness assumptions. Uh, these are actually not necessary but for the sake of limiting the amount of new concepts, which today are actually already quite uh, a lot. I'll work with the steroid algebra and the cohomology, which is how historically it was originally developed by Adams, actually. Although he very quickly realized that working with homology was better for, fine, for avoiding fineness issues. So, Okay, so recall a map f from x to y is trivial on homology if HFP tensor f is null homotopic. That's the definition. And to use this, to define the Adams filtration. So let's actually let X, Y be spectra. The Adams filtration on pi star maps from X to Y is the filtration F, S, pi star, map X to Y are maps such that F can be written as the composition of uh, F, S, F1 with F, I trivial in homology. So F0 is just everything. F1 is maps that are trivial in homology. F2 are maps that can be uh, that can be written as a composition of two maps that are trivial in homology, and so on and so forth. And the goal of the other spectral sequence is to study the associated gradient of this filtration, 
when at least when your spectra X and Y are sufficiently well behaved. X will often be just the sphere spectrum, but it, I think it clarifies to write in, in, in these terms. So, okay. And we, I will show that this filtration does come from a filtration at the level of spectra of this spectrum here. Sorry, I'm a little confused. Why can't we just like put in a few identities from X to X or Y? The identity y? is not trivial in homology. Ah, okay. With trivial, you mean that it's not Y, yeah. I mean, I mean it's zero. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So for example, uh, P in pi zero of the sphere is in Adam's filtration one. Because it's trivial in homology, and you can actually show, well, we will show very quickly that it's not in Adam's filtration two. It cannot be written as a composition of two maps. Is this clear? Oh, oh, there always is a, a prime implicit in everything here, by the way. It's, uh, well, we'll see one second what, what the role of the prime is, but um, okay, we will need um, to, yeah. a question about the FIs. So they go somewhere and just the beginning. They're just the somewhere, it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. just beginning and then. So you can write like x is x0, goes to x1. Go, well, I don't want to call them x1. Let's call them z0, z1, zs equals y. It doesn't matter how. You cannot control that, actually. Also, you, as we will see in a second, we can always choose uh, a particular choice of these zi's. Uh, there is a universal choice, which is, in fact, how this um, spectral level filtration arises. But I'm just about to say it, so maybe I just should, should just state it. Um, so, okay. We need this lemma. So f from x to y is trivial in homology if and only if the composition x goes to y goes to hfp tensor y is homotopic. Okay, and the proof is just, I'll just write down two diagrams and if you stare at them, uh, one will give you one direction and the other will give you the other. So what are these diagrams? This is F, this is H of P tensor F. And so this first diagram tells you that if you go this way, your null homo so if the map is trivial in homology, this, the, this composition is null homotopic. And so this composition, which is the one we wanted, is no homotopic. And the other diagram is uh, also quite straightforward. So you start this, and now you, you do something clever. You insert an HFP in the middle. So let me write it as one tensor eta tensor one. Uh, no, wait. Am I doing this? Yes, I am doing it in the wrong order. So sorry. First. No, 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 no. Oh, yes, I'm doing it in the wrong order. Sorry. Uh, you go this way with HFP tensor F, then you insert an eta in the middle so that if this composition is null homotopic, this composition is null homotopic. And then you multiply 
the two HFPs. And this is just, again, uh, eta tensor, uh, sorry, HFP tensor F. So if you have this composite and it's non-homotopic, then you know this composite is non-homotopic. And, and this is the end of the proof of the lemma. And why is it that? Because this tells you that if the map is trivial in homology, it can always be written as a certain factorization. So let me define HFP bar to be the fiber of the unit map eta. then F is trivial in homology. If and only if it factors through HFP bar tensor Y. Because what does it mean to factor through the fiber? It means exactly being, you know, the composition is non-homotopic. Therefore, we have that F is in Adam's filtration S if and only if it factors through H, F, P, bar, tensor S, tensor Y. Sorry, F was a map from X to Y. That you go by induction. So suppose you have this, the composition here. Sorry, maybe I should. Uh, you have this thing here. So the first map here is trivial in homology. So it factors here by our lemma. But then the second map from ZSU, this composition here is also trivial in homology. So it factors here. And you go on and on and on, and then you, you construct in the end a factorization here. And vice versa, it's easy because these maps are all trivial in homology. So their composition is definitely in, in uh, uh, Adam's filtration S. Because it's defined as the composition of S maps that are trivial in homology. So we have a a filtered version, and we have a spectral version of the Adams filtration. Now let me write it down explicitly. So we have X, well, okay, the, let me call this X zero, and you know, all the negative parts are just going to be X. I don't care. And before you can put this XF bar goes here, XF bar tensor twice, tensor X goes here and et cetera, and this is, x1, this is x2, and so on and so forth. And we have x minus infinity is just x, and the filtration in pi star of x minus infinity is the Adams filtration. It's the image of the map here, which is exactly. Okay, so sorry, this is the Adams filtration on pi star of X, uh, but you can also, instead of pi star, you can heat it with maps from Y blank. And I swapped X and Y. I knew I shouldn't do it. Uh, okay, let, can I continue with this swapping of X and Y or is it too confusing? Okay, let me pause because I think I've lost you. Uh, 
So the, the, the step here is we want to describe the Adams filtration as a filtration of spectra. So we've proven that the map uh, from X to Y is in Adams filtration X if and only if it factors through this map. Are we good with this? Yes. Okay, so let me define them. Uh, let me actually change and code them into Y. Yeah, that's probably. I should have used Y uh, X throughout for this, but okay, it doesn't matter. So filtration of S, or similarly, you get FS in pi star maps from X to Y is the Adam filtration on pi star maps X to Y. Where here I, I make map X to Y S just maps from X to Y S. We filter it this way. So what's Y infinity in this case? Just visual? yes, 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 yes. I go there. I go there. Uh, I haven't uh, said it yet. There are, we, as I said, we have two problems now. We have to understand Y infinity. And we have to understand uh, uh, the associated gradient. And you're right, these are both important problems. So let's tackle first y infinity. OK? Uh, but I'll, I'll need a tiny bit about the associated gradient uh, to, to do that. So. OK, I'll need the following lemma, which is similar to a lemma we have already seen before. So let x be a spectrum. Ah, sorry, before I saw the lemma, are, are there further questions about this filtration? Uh, yes, so what's the filtration on pi lower star y minus infinity? Oh, it's the image, right? I remember I defined it, fs pi lower ah, star. OK. Yes, yes. It's the image uh, of pi lower star y s to pi lower star y minus infinity. And we have just seen that this is exactly the Adams filtration. And it turns out kind of magically that we can actually describe the seed gradient quite explicitly, well, in terms of a spectral sequence. But still, OK, explicit maybe is overselling it. but. You, you can do a lot of stuff with it. So, sorry, f further questions about this? No, okay, the other spectral sequence, by the way, is going to be the spectral sequence associated to this filter spectrum. Uh, but of course, this is not as useful until I tell you a description of, of, of it and how much it converges. So let X be a spectrum. I want to say that there is an equivalence a natural equivalence, actually, but I don't want, I won't need it. And this and the sum of H, H, and FB. That is, this HF tensor X is just a generalized element in space. Oh, sorry, sigma M. So this is essentially a sum of a bunch of FBs. which is the important part, actually. And the proof is, uh, well, we did the case of a rational spectrum a long time ago. And this proof is actually kind of similar. Uh, let me just sketch it. Uh, pick. A i basis of pi lower star of h f p tensor x over f p, which you can certainly do. And then the tricky is is from each alpha i you can build a map like this. You go h sigma alpha i h p. This goes to uh, Sigma of uh, sorry to HFP tensor HFP tensor X 
this is just uh, alpha i tensor one. Oh, sorry, one tensor alpha i. Uh, okay, it's commutative, it doesn't matter, but let me keep things. Remember, alpha i is just a map from this. And then you can multiply and get a map like this. And this map on homotopy groups is just the inclusion of fp times alpha i inside h star x fp. And let me call this alpha i bar, and then you just take the sum of all alpha i bars. And that's an iso on pi star. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think I have in half an hour, I think I can do both the description of the CT graded and uh, the y minus y, y infinity. That's okay. So, okay, why am I doing this? It's because this tells me that the associated graded of y, remember, this is. HFP tensor HFP bar tensor S minus one, no, uh, tensor S, sorry, tensor Y is just a sum of a bunch of HFPs. In particular, it is P complete. And now the story about bus field localization suddenly shows up. Uh, so you see everything um, works. So this guy is P complete. Therefore, by induction, so moreover, the associated graded of Y is equivalent to the associated graded of its P completion. That's just because tensoring by HFP sends P equivalences to, to equivalences. Remember, HFP tensor X is HZ tensor X mod P. So, So, so to describe the Adam spectral sequence, we might as well replace Y by YP, and that's a very important part. Because in general, y infinity is going to be something terrible. But when y is p complete and connective, you will see that it is actually zero. So, actually, proposition if y is p complete and connective, y infinity is zero. Uh, sorry. So, sorry, can you explain again why a GRSY looks precisely like this? I'm a little... Well, it is HFP tensor something. Um, why? Oh, why? Why it looks like this? Sure. Yeah, sorry. 
Uh, maybe I should have been GR. What is GRSY? Is the cofiber of the map HF bar tensor S plus one tensor Y into HFP bar tensor S tensor Y. And remember, we have a cofiber sequence HP sphere HFP. That's the definition of HFP bar. So this cofiber is just, so we tensor it up with HFP bar tensor S and we get exactly, oh, sorry, I'm writing it too small perhaps. HFP tensor HFP bar tensor S tensor Y. Okay, I ran out of space, but and that's you know that's YS and that's YS plus one, and that's the graded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I'm perhaps going a bit too fast, but okay. So the graded is HFP tensor something. And that's important, one of the two important properties of this Adams filtration. The associated gradient is just a sum of a bunch of HFPs. The other important property is that the map from Ys plus one to Ys is trivial in, in, in mod P homology. Those two things together are in fact enough to reconstruct the Adams spectral sequence. Such a guy is called an Adams system. Uh, and in fact, you can show that any Adam system gives you the same spectral sequence, but uh, I'm not going to prove it now. But it is important in, in some applications that you can choose a different Adam system from this canonical one I'm building today. So anyway, uh, further questions before I go with the proof of this proposition? No. Okay. So this proof is actually easy, except that it uses a lemma, which is kind of non-trivial. Uh, I'll state the lemma and maybe I'll say a couple of words about it. It's not super hard, but it, uh, it involves uh, some factors. So the point is, so remark by induction on S, S, Y, S is connective and be complete. Why is that? Well, it's P complete because it's the fiber of this map. And these are both P complete. And it is connective because uh, HFP bar is connective. You can actually compute it because, because pi star S to pi star HFP is a surjection. So you can see there are no pi minus one in the long exact sequence. And tensor product of connective spectra is connective. So Ys is just a tensor product of HFP bar a bunch of time, but tensor Y. And so you never leave connective spectra. So therefore, if we show therefore Y minus infinity, which is the limit, sorry, Y infinity not minus infinity of the Ys is bounded below because it turns out it could have a pi minus one if you look at the, uh, at the exact sequence I wrote before. You could have a, a minus one, but no more, and be complete. So to show, therefore, to show it's a zero, it's enough 
to show HFP tensor y infinity is zero. Right, because this is HZ tensor Y mod P, uh, Y infinity mod P. And this is bounded below. So if this is zero, Y infinity mod P is zero. And since Y infinity is P complete, this implies that Y infinity is zero. Now you have a map from HFP tensor Y infinity into the limit over S of HFP tensor YS. And this guy is actually zero because all maps in the limit diagram are new homotopic. Right? Okay. Great. So the if we show that this map sorry. If we show that this map here is an equivalence, we won. And this is tricky though, because limits do not commute with tensor products typically. And so I'm going to need this lemma. So let E be a connective spectrum. such that H star E Z is finitely generated in each degree. And AI, a bunch of connective spectra. Then E tensor, the product of the AI is the same thing as the product of E tensor AI. And I see that I'm running out of time, so I don't want to prove this lemma. And just say the proof uses that if B is a finitely generated abelian group, B tensor blank and tor B blank commutes with products plus the universal coefficient theorem. And then the idea is you take the postnical filtration of the AIs and you induct on the Postnikov tower. Of the AIs. Okay, the details are in the notes that are on the web page. So Look there if you want to, to see. Just telling you the ingredients. And then you just use that Y infinity is the fiber of the product of YS, like this one minus shift plus, plus the lemma, plus the fact that the homology of HFPZ is finitely generated, in fact which follows from the description of the steroid algebra I gave last time. And actually, I'm not even sure you need connective here, but of course, in our case, it is connective.
Okay. Sorry for rushing so fast. Are there questions about this proof? Okay, so when y is p complete and connective, in fact bounded below, but let's say connective for now, uh, we have seen that y infinity is zero. So this, this filtration is exhaustive. And or, or in spectral sequence terminology, this spectral sequence is conditionally convergent. And now the next thing I want to do, and I think it's going to be the last thing for today, is describing the associated gradient. So actually, let me copy the, yeah, okay. We have these guys here. And, oh, sorry, tensor one. And here the fiber is HFP tensor HFP bar, tensor S, tensor Y. Well, there are, well, okay. HFP tensor HFP bar, tensor S minus one, tensor Y. And here is where uh, we're going to pay the fact that we work with cohomology. Uh, I'm going to give a description of these associated graded in terms of uh, cohomology. Uh, that will require some finance assumptions on why. They are actually superfluous if you give a description in terms of homology. But uh, but yeah. So from now on, we ask that the dimension over Fp of H n y Fp is finite for every n. This is just to ensure that homology is the dual of cohomology. Well, in general, you know that you can only tell that cohomology is the dual of homology. Uh, but OK, I really wouldn't have time to also talk about coactions, unfortunately. <sighs> I just want to make sure I, I need this hypothesis, but it's it's just a technical hypothesis that you can remove with a more careful analysis. If you're willing to pay a small price. Okay. So note that this implies the same statement for greater s y. And you do this by induction on S. Well, so statements and sorry for Y S and therefore for the graded Y by induction on S. Using the fact that um, the, the, the homology of HFP is finite in each degree. Which again at the end it boils down to some computations with the Steenrod algebra that I stated for people's two last time. Okay, in particular, graded S Y is a sum of HFPs finitely many in each degree. Okay. Given these, I'll throw two lemmas that uh, will essentially conclude our discussion. 
So the first lemma is let f be a direct sum of some HFPs, uh, again, finitely many in each degree. Then this cohomology here is free over the steroid algebra. And uh, the homotopy group of F is the same thing as home from the FP cohomology into FP over the steroid algebra. naturally in F. Sorry, is that, oh, no, sorry, I need a more general statement. Uh, maps from X to F, and here H upper star X, FP, is naturally in X and F, sorry. Forgot I'm doing the more general statement. And this is actually kind of obvious if you look at it. So the proof that, well, the point is that what is H upper star of F comma FP is just pi minus star of maps, sorry, minus star of maps from uh, F into HFP, and that's just star sum, sorry, by Ni minus star HFP, HFP. And here to move this, this direct sum out, I need the fact that there are finitely many in each degree. Otherwise, I would have a product, or not really a product, but you know, I would have a more complicated thing. Uh, and note that this we wouldn't have this problem if we worked with uh, homology instead of cohomology. But so it's free, and then pi star of map X F again is just. And again, I'm using the fact that there are only finitely many in each degree. And this is exactly uh, one copy of the cohomology of X for each generator of the cohomology of F. Okay, is this lemma clear? And again, the only thing you have to be careful here is the uh, um, fineness assumptions, which are actually not that important. I'm sort of skipping through them because there is a way of ignoring them if you are more careful. So we need now another lemma. So the sequence, the, the complex, so zero H of a star Y FP is maps to H of a star graded as zero y fp maps h of a star minus one i'll describe one second where this complex is come from but is exact there are two maps missing yes they are thank you uh well at least one oh uh, here is the other yes thank you uh sorry
Okay. I, I hope I haven't lost everyone. Um, is this first lemma clear? Okay. The second statement of the lemma, remember we have these maps are induced by GRSY mapping to sigma ys plus one is the boundary map. These maps are induced by these maps here. And so under our finiteness assumptions, H star minus S graded S Y F P is a free resolution of H upper star Y F P. as a module. Okay. Oh. Is it okay? Well, that's so probably like a totally formal question, but in the resolution, shouldn't the arrows go in the opposite direction? Indeed, they should. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I, I often say that the hardest part is to keep left and right in the right. Uh, oh, I see, apart. because the, the thing below the resolution is okay, but you take cohomology, so it reverses the arrow. Yes, yes. Okay. Now I, I, re I really, it's a lot easier to do things with homology also because the arrows always go in the same direction. Uh, here, it, it, uh, I tend to get confused sometimes. You're absolutely right. Also, free resolutions should go in the other direction. Indeed, indeed, indeed. indeed. Uh, okay. Thank you for catching this. Further questions? No. Okay. So this proof is actually easy. Recall that this map, sorry, FP, is actually the zero map. Because this was one of the defining properties of our thing. This map is zero in homology and therefore also in cohomology. So we get short exact sequences. Uh, oh, sorry. And of course, the map goes in the other direction. Uh, so we get short exact sequences, zero star minus one uh, y s plus one f p going to h star associated graded y and s from the longer exact sequence of this fiber sequence here. Fiber sequence like this that defines the associated graded. and then you splice them together. So for example, the kernel of this map here is exactly uh, necessarily H upper star minus one Y one, which is exactly the image of uh, no, sorry. The kernel of this map is H upper star Y0. No, Oof. no, 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 I was right. 
So for example, for the kernel of h of a star graded one, h of a star graded zero, so there's a minus one, is exactly h of a star minus one, uh, y one, which is the image of a star graded two y. So you get this, this resolution. Okay, finally we can describe the E2 term. I'll write the Adam spectral sequence. And so remember we have E1S is pi star of the associated graded of S. Uh, sorry, no, uh, pi star of maps from X to the associated graded of Y. Sorry, I'm doing the, the general thing. Uh, therefore, E2S is the homology of D1. But if you look at what D1 was, D1 was exactly uh, JK or that is this, this map from X associated grade with Y. Sigma is this one Y that I described before factoring through map X, Y, S plus one, sorry, Sigma, Y, S plus one. This was the definition of the differential that I defined uh, some time ago. Probably don't remember it, but since I'm out of time, I think you'll trust me. And if you go back in your notes, you'll see that that's exactly how I defined it. And, but then by lemma one, this is just home minus from the cohomology of greater, sorry, to the cohomology of X. A uh, there is a one here, but okay. So it's the homology of this complex. But this is just from minus star A, X applied to a free resolution of H upper star Y. And we know what is the homology of home applied to a free resolution. That guy has a name and that name is X. So E2S is X A S comma star uh, H upper star Y comma H upper star X. And so summing up theorem, if uh, y, and remember we replaced y with its p-completion because it didn't change the associated graded. So when in the convergence statement, I'll have to put a p-completion on y. So if y is connective and dimension over fp h star y, fp is finite, we have a conditionally convergence convergent spectral sequence E2. Now let me reintroduce the internal degree of all our graded abelian groups. S T A H of a star Y H of a star X 
I'm sorry, that should be explicit. This I mean, of course, the FP cohomology. Mapping converging to uh, T minus S homotopy group of maps from X to Y. And that's the Adams spectral sequence. And the main computational tool when you want to compute the homotopy groups of stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I had a very, very short application, but I think I don't have time to, to, to say it. Uh, and also, yeah, again, you can replace, you can remove this hypothesis by working with homology instead of cohomology. So you need a P completion. Right? Oh yeah, I need a P completion. I even mentioned it. I need a P completion here. You are absolutely right. Thank you. I don't know who was miracle perhaps. Yeah, you need a P completion. Indeed. Otherwise the statement cannot be true. I mean, this is obviously cannot be true. This. If you have a sub quotient, I mean, this filtration can only see piadic information. So you cannot expect it to see more. But actually, just to conclude, for p equals two, let me show you, uh, since I prepared it, let me show a, a small graph. I took it from Ravenel's book. This is the E2 page for p equals two for x equals y equals the sphere. And you can see. Uh, this is written in Adams grading. So in the x axis, you put t minus s. And every and, and in the in the vertical axis, you put the filtration degree s. So that every column is an associated graded of uh, some homotopy groups of spheres. And every every uh, bullet here is an FP. So you can see. Uh, I don't know, you can see, no, you cannot see my tools, drawings. Here, you can see the, the two adic filtration on Z, which is exactly the Adams filtration on, on, the, uh, on the pi note of the sphere. And then you see that there is a pi, just, there is just a Z2 here. Here Z2 here, and here you have a Z mod eight. Uh, in fact, the pi two, the pi three of the sphere is a Z mod twenty four, but we are looking at the two completions, so you only see the Z mod eight, and then a zero, zero, a Z mod two, etc. Just this this marker works terribly. Um, anyway. That's just to show you. And uh, the, I actually, before I finish, sorry, I'm, I know I'm late, but let me even mention that the, uh, if you're interested in how to do computations with this thing, uh, there is a nice mini course on the MSRI website by Mark Behrens. Uh, I put a link in the notes. It's titled, uh, I think, Introduction to Computational Techniques in Stable Homotopy Theory or something like that. Uh, I have no time to say any of those to describe any of those techniques, but he explains how to actually compute these X groups, which is algorithmic, but you know, uh, there are better and worse ways of doing these. And in particular, uh, this portion here can actually be computed by hand if you want to. So it's, and with a computer, you can go much, much further and say something about how to compute the differential. In general, in the Adam spectral sequence, there is this thing where the E2 page, the X groups are algorithmic, you can just put a computer and it will churn out some answer. And the differentials are not algorithmic. Differentials are basically impossible to compute unless you're Mahu world um, or, that, or something like that. I mean, that, that's kind of a joke, but it is true that Mahu world was famously good at computing differentials and that's more of an art than a science. But at least in these low degrees, you can see that uh, the, there cannot be any differentials here because we know that all these terms here are permanent cycles because they're just a two adic filtration on Z. So you cannot, these cannot be hit by any differential since they're cycles, since they survive. And then pi two, pi three and pi four have no, uh, nothing they can hit with differentials. So they need to survive until the infinity page and also pi four and pi five and pi six, of course and by seven, 
Yeah. By eight is, I think, the first place where there could be a differential. And OK, I think I'll leave the chart here and let you bask again in the glory of the atom spectral sequence here. Yeah. And in fact, this, this spectral sequence is strongly convergent when X and Y are finite, for example. Um, that's, um, you know, that requires essentially proving there is a vanishing line, which is a non-trivial theorem, but it's purely algebraic fact. You can compute it. Um, it, it this depends only on the E2 page, this, this additional part. So you can actually just do algebraic manipulations to prove it. OK, I think really that's all I want to say. OK, thank you, Dennis. Bye. OK, sorry for a somewhat technical stuff.